So here we have a couple of situations where we have beakers full of liquid. In one case, it's pure water. In the other case, it's seawater. They're both capped off. So you know that you would be trapping whatever is evaporating above the liquid. We know that if we have pure water, that there will be some water molecules that are above the surface of the water. I mean, if you keep a terrarium ever, you notice that occasionally there'll be drops of water that form on the glass and trickle back down. So it's in some sort of an equilibrium. Over here, we have seawater. It's not pure water like this anymore. It's got ions in it, dissolved salts like sodium chloride is what they have in this particular picture, all right? And seawater is mostly sodium chloride that's in there, dissolved in the water, but there's lots of other stuff too. Nevertheless, the question is, does that have an effect on how many water molecules end up as water vapor? And the answer is, you bet it does. And how do we tell what's going to happen? Will there be more? or less than the normal case as a result of this situation. So we have to ask ourselves, do those ions in the water attract or repel? Notice I underlined the attract. Yes, they attract the water molecules. Why? Well, this is a case of the ion dipole because we know water molecules have a little shape like this, and so they have a dipole. And if you have sodium chloride that dissolves in the water, it's forming ions. So you're going to have ion dipole forces that are attractive. And we're going to use that to answer this first question. Is the concentration of water molecules in the air above the sodium chloride solution less than the same as or greater than the concentration of the water molecules above the pure water on the left? Well, we just got through saying there were more attractive forces here. If there's more attractive forces here, that's going to keep more of the water down in the water instead of allowing it to become water vapor. So we are going to say that it will have lower vapor pressure above the seawater. Second question, is the boiling point of the salt solution lower than, equal to, or higher than the boiling point of pure water? Well, what's happening when you're boiling something? It has enough energy for it to leave where it's being held together by the forces. There's enough energy as heat for the molecule to escape the attractive forces that would keep it as a liquid. But we said this has more attractive forces, right? If it has more attractive forces, it's going to be harder for it to get enough energy to boil. That means it's going to have to be hotter to have enough energy to boil. So the boiling point is going to increase. The next question is, is the freezing point of the salt solution lower than, equal to, or higher than the freezing point of pure water? Well, that certainly has nothing to do with things escaping. So we have to think about that in a slightly different way. Freezing, what happens during freezing? When you're freezing something, it is forming a crystalline pattern. If you have particles that aren't all the same in there. It means you're going to have a interference with making that crystalline pattern. So the crystalline pattern will not form easily. That means you're going to have a lower freezing point. 